Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope everyone's having a great holiday season thus far. Well, we're back today with some awesome jailbreak updates that I'll get to in just a second. Uh, now, I know it's been a while since I've made a video, but I have been pretty busy. Just recently purchased my first house with my girlfriend, and uh, we also adopted two kittens as well, too. So that's a bit of an update on my end. We've just been remodeling and doing some updates. So it's been a bit crazy, but things are going good, and I hope you guys have been doing good as well, too. Uh, unfortunately, the jailbreak news has slowed down a lot towards the end of this year, but today we have our first insight. Uh, to when we could be receiving the very first iOS 15 jailbreak. So I wanted to start off by saying thank you all so much for stopping by and supporting the channels. Uh, let's get into the news that I'm talking about, though. So, like I said, the main reason is just last week, I think it was last Thursday, with the release of iOS 15.2, an iOS 15.1 jailbreak is on the horizon. And this is because iOS 15.2 patched a bunch of jailbreak vulnerabilities that can be used to jailbreak iOS 15.1 and below, potentially even without a computer. So within iOS 15.2's patch notes, this is the main kernel vulnerability that was patched that exists in earlier iOS versions. And it says a malicious application may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. Essentially, that means this could be used for a jailbreak. And if we go over to this tweet, according to uh, the people who found it, the developers that found this vulnerability, they're going to release it or release the information they have on it, potentially a proof of concept exploit as well, in 60 days. So in less than 60 days now, uh, we could see the very first exploit be released for iOS 15.1 and below. So that is incredible. So once this information is released, then the Uncover and Chimera jailbreak teams could potentially update their utilities all the way up to iOS 15.1. Now, this is not the only kernel vulnerability found in iOS 15.2. There was also one major one in iOS 15.1.1. A few were attributed to Ian Beer of Google Project Zero. He is also well known for releasing his research. So there could be even more than this one being released in the next couple of months. But if we take a look at last year's and years past jailbreak release days, typically they come out at the end of February. With this vulnerability or exploit proof of concept project coming out in the middle of February, that puts us right on track to see the very first iOS 15 jailbreak at the end of February. Again, it's gonna be the same as years past, where it's semi-untethered, you sideload the app with Alt Store or an on-device signing platform, that installs Cydia or any other package manager that comes with the jailbreak. So all in all, this year is looking very similar to years past, and there is a reason. When new exploits come out, Apple shows their hand, so to speak, by patching the vulnerabilities with a new iOS update. Each year, we typically see an iOS blank point one jailbreak because that vulnerability was patched in blank point two. So let's recap the basics. From what I can tell with the information provided at this point in time, it's best to be on iOS 15.1 or lower. Currently on my main iOS device, I am actually on iOS 15.1 beta 3. That is because in iOS 15.0.1 or below, another vulnerability is potentially going to be coming out for that. Basically, the lower iOS version that you stay on, the better chance you have at receiving a jailbreak. The downside of that is you don't receive the latest iOS features. So that was the good news, and I don't want to dwell on the following information, but it really needs to be stated and realized that jailbreaking goes in waves. Is it ever going to die off entirely? No, but its interest level and the community's involvement as far as developers and you know tweak developers, jailbreak developers, it's pretty low right now. We have not seen too many updates come out in the last six months. Still, there's a few things I want to share with everyone just so they're aware. One, there are a ton of fake jailbreak videos out on YouTube right now, especially since YouTube removed the dislike button. They look even more and more real. But there's not an iOS 15 jailbreak out, and a lot of the jailbreak utilities have not received any updates lately. 
Now, I'm really surprised we have not seen an update for the iOS 14.5 jailbreak, the untethered one with Fugu 14. Uh, still, even if you guys have a device that's on an older iOS version, like 14.3, for example, it's not yet compatible. Granted, you can jailbreak with Uncover, but the untethered aspect still is limited to devices that are on iOS 14.4.1 or iOS 14.5, and it's still not a full untether. You, it just basically takes the need of using Alt Store away to consistently re-sign the uncovered jailbreak. So, big surprise that hasn't come out with an update yet. Another one, I'm surprised that we haven't seen an update for uh, check rain for iOS 15 for the iPhone 10 and below. I thought that would be updated by now. And that's kind of the whole point of the second half of this video is that there really hasn't been any jailbreak utility updates. There have been very far and few between useful tweaks that have come out that are new. Um, it was tragic to see that the dynastic repo shut down. That was like one of the best ways to, or for developers, tweak developers to host paid tweaks and have it be a very user-friendly experience for you know the end user to purchase said paid tweaks and have a good experience with that transaction. And, you know, it's just, it comes back to, if we don't have these paid resources out there for our developers, if there's no incentive besides, you know, them doing it out of the joy of their hearts, then this is kind of what, where we end up with, you know, this is what we end up with here. It's not that the money is, uh, everything like I make these videos because I enjoy jailbreaking like I've been doing it since the iPhone 3G It's just fun and it's fun making these videos. I like editing and producing videos um, But they're not everyone is like me, you know Some people want to get paid for their efforts or and you know arguably they should Tweak development and jailbreak development is not an easy task I would argue that these videos are a lot easier to make than making a jailbreak. So in the end, it's just really sad to see the state of the community right now. So I'm hoping that this year we can see a big turnaround. Like like I came back making videos for this channel right uh, with iOS 11 and all of those jailbreaks. And from iOS 11 to like iOS 14, I mean, maybe even 13, there was kind of an uptick in the interest uh, surrounding jailbreaking. And last year, since the utility, the second utility of the year came out so late, like when iOS 15 was out, I definitely saw a huge decline in people interested in jailbreaking. And with every year, you know, Apple adds more and more features to iOS to make jailbreaking less and less useful. But when it comes down to it, like I am just that person that likes jailbreaking because it, it unlocks the secured OS. Like you have the ability to install and tweak whatever you want on your personal device. And it'll be really interesting to see what happens in the next year with all of Apple's legal problems right now, legal disputes that uh, are going on to see if they will allow a third party app store. Either way, I am all set to do the coverage. I have a device on pretty much any firmware that is needed. So I will be here and I'll be the first to let you know when a new jailbreak utility or update is out. Thank you guys so much for the support and for stopping by and watching this video. I'll catch you guys real soon, but until next time, this is Tony signing out.